Welcome to the Lovish Podcast, a practical weekly podcast centered on mental wellness, faith, relationships, and you guessed it, love. I'm your host, Sita Hood, a licensed clinical social worker. Now, sis, I should mention before we hop into the show, this is not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed therapist. You ready? Let's get it. Welcome back to another episode of the Lovish Podcast. I am so excited to have you here with me. You all have been hitting up my DMs. You guys have been leaving podcast reviews and you have been loving the episodes lately. Someone said, I found another binge worthy show, y'all. I absolutely love this podcast. One episode and I've been hooked. The topics are super relatable and I love how she backs things up with biblical concepts. I am loving it. So if you are not caught up, go ahead and catch up. And also, if you did not follow with us on the relationship series from last month, you will want to go back to the relationship series from last month because some of that came with free worksheets and downloads and things to help you really dig in and transform your life because that is what we are all about over here in these streets, allowing you to believe that you are who God says you are and then equip equipping you with the strategy so that you could step into God's next level vision for your life. Okay. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about some prayers that are good to pray and some affirmations that are good to say when you are healing, because we know that healing is a process. And many times when you are in various phases of healing, you can't see the next step. You can't even see life as being different until you're on close to the tail end of your healing process. But before we even jump into that, I want to talk to the church folk. Okay. Is that okay? Can I talk to the church folk? (laughs) Cause I know some church folk done push play on this episode. And when they heard me say affirmations, they was like, "Uh uh-uh, affirmations are not from God. Bye, 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 bye. Let me just define what an affirmation is or affirm. Cause that's what we're doing. An affirmation is just here. Let's get into it. Affirm means to state as a fact or assert strongly and publicly. Another uh, definition is to offer someone emotional support or encouragement. So when you are stating affirmations, you are affirming what is already true. You are stating what is already the seed that God already placed inside of you, you, you speaking that thing into existence because it's already there. It's already been planted. And so the word affirmation means the action or process of affirming something or being affirmed. So again, providing that emotional support and encouragement and stating as a fact or announcing publicly what is already true. And I know that there are some people that say affirmations don't work. That's why you have to keep on doing them. Well, I would say, isn't that the same way with scripture? Aren't we called to meditate on the word? And what does meditate mean? Well, honey, I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you what it means. Meditate means to think deeply or carefully about something, to plan mentally to consider. So the Bible tells us to meditate on the word day and night, to think deeply and carefully about it. So when we are meditating, when we are thinking carefully and deeply about the woman that God designed us to be, then we come to find out that he created us with unique characteristics, unique assignments, unique personality traits that are already there. Pieces of ourselves that are already there. I can remember a time when I thought that my character was strange. 
where I thought that I was weird. I thought that I was an outcast. I couldn't understand why I seemed to feel things so, so deeply. And that was pain, but also excitement as well. If I was getting excited about something, I was excited to the nth degree. If I was sad about something, I was in the depths of sadness. And I said, God, why did you make me like this? And now I've come to understand years later that I'm created like this for a specific purpose. And no, there's not a lot of people that are created like that. A lot of people that can feel things so strongly that can feel some of the emotions that other people carry when they're around you, because that's a spiritual gift. And I had to discover that that was a spiritual gift by reading the word of God, finding out who God says I am. And then taking that a step further and affirming that God is not going to continue to bring things into your path to confirm who you are and your character. If you will reject it every time, if you reject step one, how can he get you to step three? He can't. You won't even open up your eyes to allow this thing to be a possibility. So we have to meditate on the word, meditate on the scriptures, meditate on you know, what God says about us and then actually ask him for insight, lean into the calling of the Holy Spirit. And that is how we discover who we are. So for those of y'all that's still with me, (laughs) meditations and affirmation have to be biblically based, but Christians can practice meditation and affirmation. Okay. So now that we got that out the way, let's just hop into the tea, right? One of the prayers that I think is very important to pray as you are on your healing process, no matter where you are in your journey. um, And if you listened a couple of episodes back, we talked about the journey of healing. I'm just going to recap it really quick. There's becoming affirmed and empowered or Bay. So this is the whole curriculum that I teach inside of my 90 day group intensives. And in the becoming stage, you are just becoming aware of who you are, your existence. That's that meditation on the word and really finding that there were other people in the Bible and in the world that God created for a specific purpose, just like you. Right. So for me on my journey, what that looked like was seeing a little bit of myself in Moses, seeing a little bit of myself in Joseph, seeing a little bit of myself in Jeremiah, all of these different prophets. As I began to meditate on the word, to think deeply on the word, then God's word (laughs) became real. It became flesh. So that's the becoming stage. And then the affirm stage is when I had a little bit of courage and a little bit of boldness to step into where I felt the Holy Spirit was leading. As I took steps, God affirmed my character. He affirmed that I was in the right place. He affirmed that I was doing what I was meant to do. So I wasn't necessarily held back by waiting for confirmation because I... I used to be one of those people that's like, am I sure I'm hearing God? I don't know. I need 99 confirmations before I could take even a toe step forward. And that is actually disobedience. Now, I'm not saying you can't get confirmation from God because you should get confirmation from God before you move forward. But it is disobedient to stomp our little foot. And call ourselves making a demand on God that he shows us something more times, more times, more times, more times before we even are moving forward. If we think about that from the context of a parent and a child, when, you know, you tell your child to do something and they ask, "Okay, well, I need proof that you really want me to do this. Okay, here, I got this for you. Now go ahead and do it. Um, That's not enough. I need more proof. Child, listen. Most of us are not even going to provide the first proof. Okay, we're not going to we're going to say, get your butt over there and do what I told you to do because I told you to do it. That's what we're going to say. So thank God that he has patience with us. But I just want to challenge you there because I had all sorts of doubt. And I know that part of that was an attack of the enemy and a trick of the enemy to keep me stuck and bound up and not believing that I was who God said that I was. So that's what's important here. So my character was being affirmed as I continued to step out and then empowered. 
I became empowered once I began to share my story. Once I began to use what the Holy Spirit had uh, taught me in my life and what I was already teaching so many other women. Once I began to truly embrace that and package that up and put that in, into a curriculum and test it out and, you know, really just help other women to work through the process, I was empowered. And I realized that this thing, this calling, this longing that I felt had been inside of me the entire time. I only needed to step in. I only needed to lean in. I only needed to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit in order to be who God called me to be. So regardless of what stage of healing you're at, you're going to want to pray for courage to confront your next, to confront un- and uncover painful memories that may come up. Because let's be honest here, real healing ain't cute. Real healing requires that icky transformation that doesn't feel good. It requires you to be very uncomfortable. You have to be so uncomfortable and challenge yourself to believe and and even think in a way that is totally opposite of what has been placed on you your entire life. So many times we are not aware of circumstances that were meant to be set up as blockers for our destiny blockers for helping us to shift forward into our next. And it's like, you have the sight, you can see it straight ahead of you, but you're struggling to connect to it. You're struggling to tap into it. And that's because you're struggling to believe that it is actually true. You're struggling to believe that you are who God says you are. So the courage to confront the courage to uncover those painful memories, and then the courage to confront who or what you need to confront in order to heal. Because sometimes your healing is going to require a confrontation. That confrontation may look like an apology. It may look like um, a declaration of who you are, of who you're, this new person is, this new character. And the confrontation might not even be with other people. Part of the confrontation might be with you. You, baby girl. (laughs) You know, we like to look everywhere else. But sometimes the confrontation is that I have been toxic. I have been messy. I have been caught up in holding on to patterns that have kept me safe for so long. I have wrapped myself in these patterns like a warm, fuzzy blanket because they were safe for me. Even though I know that these patterns, these habits, these character traits are toxic, that they are detrimental to the woman that I am according to the way God designed me. So sometimes the confrontation is right in the mirror. Another prayer you want to pray is the strength to continue. It can be so challenging to continue when you hear people making slick comments about you. And and part of those comments are based on your old character, your old way of life, or even maybe some current things. But you've made a choice today that you want to be different. It it can take a lot out of you to make an active choice to continue. But I want you to pray for the strength to continue and not to let fear win. So you want to pray for the courage to confront those things that are scary and the strength to continue after the confirmation. We're going to pause right here and have a word from our sponsor for this episode. And when you come back, I want to give you some affirmations for healing. Hey, sis, did you know that women of color are three times more likely to develop chronic illnesses than their peers? And that number doubles for working women and caregivers. 
Woo child, I don't know about you, but I am tired of seeing black and brown women overworked, overwhelmed, and stressed out, compromising on our quality of life. You know that relaxed feeling you get when you're at Sunday brunch spilling all the piping hot tea and it feels so wonderfully therapeutic? Yeah, girl, that's how our participants say it feels to be at our events. Girl, we see you, we get you, and we have created an intimate space just for you. Consider this your personal invitation to join us for the Pink Emerald Retreat. At this three-day intimate weekend retreat for recovering strong friends, high-performing career women, and boss babes, you're gonna walk away with a stronger sense of peace, customized plan of action for daily living, and a unique blueprint to help you walk more confidently in your God-given assignment. I can't wait to meet you, boo. Click the link in the show notes to apply for the retreat today. This episode is brought to you by Anchored Media. Do you have a message that you want to share with the world, but aren't sure exactly how to get it out there? Have you been wrestling back and forth with the idea of starting a podcast, but got overwhelmed just thinking about it? I get it. Before I started my podcast, I struggled with overthinking, marketing tactics, and just doing the thing, putting my voice out there. Thankfully, I attended Anchor Media's Find Your Voice Academy retreat for podcasters. Anchor Media has helped over 100 plus shows launch profitable podcasts. During this three-day event, I learned everything I needed to start a podcast from choosing the right tools and equipment, making my message marketable, and how to make money from my podcast. I even left with my first episode recorded. Podcasting is a great way to build confidence in your voice, multiply your income, and build an engaged audience. If you're ready to get over your fear of speaking and start your own podcast, then join CEO Tatum Tamia and Anchored Media on Thursday, April 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Find Your Voice Academy open house to learn how you can attend the next one. Sign up today at anchoredmedia.com forward slash open house. That's A-N-C-H-O-R-E-D-M-E-D-I-A dot com forward slash O-P-E-N-H-O-U-S-E. All right, let's finish out this episode with some affirmations. I want you to take a moment and repeat these affirmations and know that they are true, whether you can believe them right now or not, because they are all based in scripture. This is what God says about you. Ready? Here we go. I can do all things through Christ. I have everything I need to heal. I am destined to do great things. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ with purpose, passion, and power. I am equipped to handle everything that comes my way. I have the foresight of a spiritual sniper and I counterattack the plans of the enemy before they manifest. I am chosen. I am loved. I am a confident babe. <laughs> 